So a couple months ago, I thought it would be fun to learn how to play cricket. Um, I'm an American and I had never played before. Uh, I just thought it would be fun to get some friends together and play a pretty legit game of cricket. So the problem I found when I tried to do that is that there's a bunch of videos online about how you can watch cricket and understand the rules as a spectator, but there's not a lot of like details about what you do logistically, where you stand, what stuff you need, stuff like that for how, how do you actually produce a product of a game of cricket that's fun with your friends, that's not confusing. So I went all around the internet and acquired the bits and pieces for uh, what a cricket game actually looks like. So I wanted to make this video to show you all of that. So this is kind of how you actually play cricket in a fun social friend setting. So I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. So I'll get right into it. Um, you need a field, uh, preferably grass, because you may want to dive. Uh, this field is way too small, but I'm just showing it to you because it's right next to my house and convenient visually. Um, so you need a field and it needs to be big. You're going to be playing in a 360 degree playing like position. The ball can go anywhere and you can hit the ball pretty far. So you want like a baseball field or like a soccer field size thing. Um, then you need these wickets. I built these out of PVC pipe. Um, at the end of the video, I'll, I'll explain more about how I made them and more about the equipment. Then you need a cricket bat. You need some sort of ball. Uh, this is a tennis ball with tape on it, which is what people do in, in the cricket world. Um, a softball is good because then you don't need like a helmet and pads and stuff, which I wouldn't, didn't want to do. And then you need some way to mark these two lines that you see in the field. And that's about it. Then for the players, you need 11 people on each team officially. You could do 10, you could do nine, you could do 12, you could do 13, but in real cricket, it's 11 people per team. So I'm always trying to get 22 people to pl come play cricket. So now let me give you a brief overview of the whole game before I dive into some more details of batting and fielding. So there's two teams and the object is to score more runs than the other team. So uh, flip a coin or something to decide who's gonna bat first. You can also do this baseball trick where you, like one person does this and this and then that person gets to decide. So do that. The fielding team, put all your uh, players in the field, all of them, all 11 or whatever you got. The batting team, get two batsmen to go out on the field uh, and put them in front of each wicket. So the batting team's job is to score runs. They do this by hitting the ball away from the wickets and then they try to run across to the other side and touch the line. Since there's two batsmen, each one of them needs to reach the other side. And if they do that, then they get one run. So one switch of them equals one run. And then if you hit the ball, ideally you want to get, you want to run back and forth as many times as you can without uh, the other team getting you out. And I'll explain how you get out in a sec. If the batsman hits the ball and it bounces and touches a boundary, like a uh, bush or a wall or something like that, then he automatically gets four runs and that's called a four. If he hits it and it goes over directly, he gets six runs and that's called a six. And he does not have to run back and forth when you get a four or six, you just get the points and say yay. So the fielding team is trying to get the batsman out of the game. And there's 10 ways you can get a batsman out there's only really four ways that really come up and then there's some other ones that come up less frequently. So the fielding team is going to bowl the ball, aka pitch the ball, towards me for me to hit. If I miss it and it hits the wicket, then I'm out. If I hit it up in the air and someone on the fielding team catches it, then I'm also out. If the bowler bowls the ball and it hits my leg, but we all decide that it would have hit the wicket, the ball would have hit the wicket if it had not hit my leg, then we call that an out too. That's called leg before wicket or LBW, everyone calls it. If you hit the ball and you're running towards the other side, if before you get across this line, they throw the ball and hit the wicket, then you're out. If I'm batting and at some point I accidentally hit my own wicket, then I'm out. And if I hit the ball, and it hits that wicket over there, then my partner's out who's over there. If I'm batting and when I take my swing, I go past this line over here, then I'm not safe. Uh, someone from the other team, if they get the ball back here or something like this, 
they can knock over the wicket. And if I have not crossed back over this line yet, then I'm out. The other four ways to get out almost never happen, but I'll just tell you them anyway. It's hitting the ball twice, handling the ball as a batsman, interference, and delaying the game. So when a batsman gets out, the batsman gets off the field and a new one comes in and replaces him where he was. The other batsman over there who didn't get out, he stays on the field for as long as he stays safe and doesn't get out. He doesn't also get out when the other person gets out. So we're gonna keep on putting new batsmen out when people get out until we get down to the very last two batsmen from your team who have not gotten out. Then once one of those last two gets out, then your whole team's batting session is over. So essentially one of your batters will never actually get out, but we're just gonna end the batting session there. That's because in cricket, you always need two batsmen to run with each other. And if one of them gets out at the end of uh, that batting session, then he'll have no one to run with. So we just say it's the end right there. So let's say my team's done hitting, then my team goes and becomes the fielding team and the other team comes and becomes the batting team. Uh, so once my team hits and then your team hits, that's called one innings. It's plural. In baseball, it's called an inning. In cricket, it's called innings. I know it's weird, but um, normally in cricket, we just play one long innings. My team hits, your team hits, and then the game's over. Um, that normally actually takes a long time because batting kind of takes a long time in cricket. Um, there's other ways you can play, which I'll explain later. Then, whoever has the most runs, my team or your team, wins the game. So now let me get into more details about what the fielding team does. So on the fielding team, you're going to have someone called the bowler, which is like the pitcher in baseball. They're going to lead the play by throwing the ball towards the other wicket in front of the other batsman. So that guy's bowling. You're also going to want someone to act kind of as a catcher, like in baseball. So when they pitch it over here, he's going to catch it and throw it back. That guy's called the wicket keeper, I think. Then everyone else on the fielding team is going to spread out all around the field to be able to catch balls and like get ground balls when they're hit near them. So back to the bowler. So the bowler is not a dedicated position. Everyone on the field is going to be the bowler. Uh, so we throw six throws. So if say I'm starting as the bowler, I'm going to throw it six times and then I'm done. And then a new person is going to come and be the bowler now, but they're gonna go from that side throwing this way. This set of six throws that each person does is called an over, which is a term we use a lot in cricket, an over. So these throws have to be like decent, good throws that the batter should be able to hit. Um, if it's too high or too wide or like a wild ball, or if you bend your elbow when you throw, we're not gonna count that as one of the six throws. Um, in professional cricket, We'll act, they would actually penalize you and give the other team a run if you throw one of those bad throws. But um, when I play, I notice that everyone just kind of sucks at bowling. So it would, would be kind of mean to like penalize people for that. So I just say, if, if they throw a bad throw, just give them a new throw to redo that one. So again, you're just gonna throw six throws and then you're done bowling and someone else comes on the other team. So once everyone has thrown their six throws on the field, then you can repeat people bowling in the same order that they did last time. So in cricket, when you pitch the ball, or we call it bowl it, you have to keep your arms straight the entire time. Uh, if you bend it, like I said, we're gonna tell you, like you have to redo that throw and keep your arms straight this time, or in professional, they give you a penalty. So the other thing you have to do, you have to keep your arms straight, and the other thing is you have to keep both feet behind this line when you throw it. So. As an example, I'll show you what I do. I kind of come up and I get low and then I put one foot here and I lean into it down like this and my arm comes over like this. The other thing, if you watch cricket, you'll notice it almost always bounces first. Um, it doesn't have to bounce when you throw it, but you want it to bounce because it makes it harder for the batter to hit it. So if it doesn't bounce, the guy can still hit it, um, but you just didn't really do a good job. And when you're throwing, you're basically trying to hit that wicket every single time because if you hit it, then the batter's out. You could try to be strategic and try to throw it like a little to the side or put it in a position where you think he's gonna swing but hit the ball really bad. Um, 
but that's up to you. It's kind of an opportunity like loss if you do that because if he misses, then you're not gonna hit the wicket. And if everyone sucks, you kind of can bowl people out a lot. Uh, so I would recommend going for the wicket unless you really think you have a good strategy, like throwing it to the side a little bit. So once you do your six good throws with your straight arm behind the line, uh, then you're done. And like I said, a new, uh, a new bowler from your team is gonna start from the other side. When that happens, the people batting don't also switch sides. They stay exactly where they were, just the bowlers switch sides. One tip about field positioning for everyone else in the field, if you have a right-handed batter like this, over here, he's probably not gonna hit it very often. So you don't need to put a bunch of people right here, you know, across from his back shoulder. Most of the time you're gonna hit it in front, to the right, to the left, and behind him over here. It comes over there, goes over there, goes over there. You want someone behind too, obviously. But again, over here doesn't happen too much. And if they're left-handed, then over here, the ball doesn't really go too much. So you wanna focus on here most of the time. Another thing about fielding is say, the batsman hits the ball and he's running across and we're trying to get him out by throwing the ball at this wicket. It's a really good idea for someone on the fielding team to stand behind the wicket like this. So when they throw it, if they miss, you can deflect it into the wicket. If you throw the ball at the wicket, it doesn't have to knock these stumps over. It just has to hit the pole. Sometimes maybe if you have a weird cricket set, it won't knock over the stump doesn't matter, you just have to hit it, doesn't matter what falls down. Also, if you have the ball in your hand, you can smack the wicket like this. So now here's some more details about being the batsman or being on the batting team. Uh, when you hit the ball, you are not forced to run. That's kind of a cool thing in cricket. If you hit the ball, you can decide, I'm not gonna run, I didn't like where I hit it, I'm just gonna stay. So it almost always takes communication with the other batsman on the other side. You're, no, you're normally gonna be like, okay, let's go, or let's go for two, or stop, 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 something like that. If you hit the ball, anywhere is in play. There's no foul balls. It's a 360 degree field. If you hit it over the fence, it's six. If you hit the fence, it's four points. Um, if you barely tip it, it's still, it's still gonna go. The only thing I say is if you're playing and they throw a wild pitch, that like goes flying back there and you never even hit it, I would say don't, you're not allowed to run. I think in professional cricket, you're allowed to run if that happens. But uh, when I play, I say, you have to make contact if you wanna run. Um, otherwise, like I said, people, people aren't very good at bowling. That would happen a million times during the game and it kind of takes away from the integrity of cricket, I would say. So I would just say you, can make, you have to make contact, but you can play differently if you want. When you're batting, you only have to have one foot behind the line. You don't have to have two feet behind the line. One foot like this is right. So let's say you hit the ball and you decided to run. When you run, your other batsman over there, he needs to run too. You can't end up running and have two guys on one side. Like in baseball, that doesn't work and they can get the other wicket out. So you both have to run at the same time. The bat counts as your body. So if your bat crosses the line, then you're safe. It doesn't have to be your body or like your chest, like in sprinting or something like that. So for this reason, it, that's why it's really convenient to have two bats for each of you to play with, because if you have a bat, you have a longer reach to touch the line. So if you only have one bat, I would recommend getting like a baseball bat or some stick or something that the other guy can use. So at least he has a longer reach. If you hit the ball and as you're running, you drop the bat because you have habits from baseball, just continue running, it doesn't matter. The only thing is now you don't have as long of a reach. If I'm running over to that side and I cross halfway and then they hit that wicket, then I'm gonna be the one that gets out. If I'm running and I don't even cross halfway and they knock over that wicket, then that guy who came from that wicket is out. If I hit the ball and then I run over to the other side and it's only one time, uh, now the new batsman is gonna be here, my partner, and he's gonna take pitches from over here. We don't switch back or something like that. Whoever is on the opposite side of the bowler is just gonna be throwing balls and they're gonna hit now. So I'm gonna give you a quick example of like a, of a batsman swing. Um, there's no one for, to pitch it to me, so I'll just have to do it in the air. Remember, one foot needs to be behind this line. And uh, in cricket, they normally like do like a half swing like this. They don't go way up here like baseball. So I would keep it here. And then if the ball comes, then you kind of want to 
I don't know, swing it, I guess. It's not that hard. Um, but just remember, you need to protect this wicket. So you want to stand pretty close to it here. You don't want to be like this because there's more opportunity for the ball to miss the more your bat is horizontal. So you want to be here because you don't have to run. Your only job is to make sure the thing doesn't hit it. The ball can hit your bat and go that far, like two feet, and you don't have to run because you did your job of not letting it hit the wicket. So just protect the wicket and hit conservatively. It's risky to hit it in the air because someone can catch it. So try to hit it low to the ground and also um, don't go for big swings because if you miss and it hits your wicket, you're out. And it's really sad when you get out. So just watch out for that. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about how long you should be playing cricket or how many innings you should play. So when I play, I play one innings total. So my team's gonna hit, then your team's gonna hit, and then the game's over. When I played that with like not very experienced people, that entire game took an hour and a half. The guy who I bought my bat from, he said he would play as a kid, and he said he would play one innings just like that, and it would take him like uh, from 9 a.m. to like 1 p.m. or something like that. But everyone there was really good at playing cricket. Basically, the better you are at hitting, the longer the game's gonna take. So a security way you can play to make sure it doesn't take like all day long or like half the, the game. If you wanna limit it to like three hours total, you can play a version of cricket which is called T20 cricket. And all that means is that you limit the amount of overs you throw, the set of six throws, to 20 overs. So that's 120 pitches total each team is gonna get. That way um, the game will be limited in how long it'll last. When professionals play T20 cricket, their games normally last three hours. So it should be well under that if you guys are not very good. So you may wanna keep in the back of your head if the game's taking really long, like, hey, we should limit this to 20 overs if it's taking a really long time. But just for a lesson, in traditional cricket, they play two innings. So each team bats twice. Uh, the professionals take five days to play that whole game. I bet if I played, it would take like three hours or something like that. So lastly, I just wanna share some more information about the equipment of cricket. So I'll start off with the bat. I got this bat on OfferUp. Um, it actually came with another one. I think I got like two of them for like 60 bucks or 50 bucks from some Australian dude. Um, you can generally find some British guy or some Indian guy who has a bunch of, who has randomly has a bat that they don't use on like Facebook, OfferUp, um, Craigslist, maybe eBay. Uh, you can normally get one for like under 50 bucks or something like that. And again, it's really convenient if you have two because then you don't have to switch back and forth if you hit an odd number of runs. Getting a bat is probably the hardest thing you'll have to get to be able to play cricket. Everything else you can kind of just find conveniently. The next thing is the ball. Um, a traditional cricket ball is hard, like almost like a billiards ball, I would say. Um, and I don't want to play with that because uh, then you need like pads and stuff and it hurts really bad. So I know that like people who just play cricket casually use a tennis ball and then they tape it up with electrical tape to make it a little bit harder and a little bit more fun to play with. So that's what I did. I have some tennis balls with tape on it. Some people recommend taping it halfway like that and that allows you to curve the ball better. Some people say you should completely cover it. I did some little ones. Last time I played, I didn't even cover it at all and it was still fun. So some version of that using a softball, I would recommend. So now the wickets. So again, I made this, both of these wickets out of PVC pipe. It's one inch pipe and I got 20 feet of it and it was used kind of perfectly to make this. So the dimensions are, it needs to be 28 inches from the top to the ground and it needs to be nine inches across. Um, that's about it. You could get anything else that's 28 by nine and just put it up. You could get like a piece of plywood and then put like a cinder block back here. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be poles because it's just this whole striking distance is what needs to be showing. And these things on top are called the stumps. They don't have to be there. It's just kind of an old timey thing to have those things so that you can really visually see when the stumps were hit. And I think it just is way more fun having them there. And I painted those yellow because it's fun. Um, anyways, mine have legs. 
um, you don't have to do that. Real, real stumps, you like are wood poles that you just like hammer into the ground, but this way you can use them on grass or asphalt. And now the line, uh, I use, I made it using Rust-Oleum, uh, inverted marking paint. And I just sprayed this line on the ground and it should be removable. It's water-based. And then all you need to know here is this line needs to be four feet from the base of the wickets. Okay, so the dimensions of the field, that line and that line need to be 58 feet from each other. Again, it's that line to that line, not wicket to wicket. Line to line, it's 58 feet. Now, here on this like mock field I created, that is not 58 feet, that is way less. Uh, when I played recently, I measured out 58 feet and then all of us playing were like, yo, dude, that's way too far. We're not going to be able to do that. So then we just brought it back to the point where we thought it was close enough. So you can obviously do that. It doesn't have to be 58 feet, but professional cricket is 58 feet. So I think that's all the information you're going to need to get a cricket game going with your friends. Um, I really hope you have a good time and I hope cricket gets more prominent because it's a really fun game and it's a really social fun game too because you know one team is just sitting on the sidelines for half the game so they get a good chance to like have a uh, have a drink have some food talk to each other sit in chairs it's really fun it's a really fun social game community based game that's why I really liked playing it and I'm excited to play it again soon so best of luck with cricket and I hope the game spreads I'll put more information in the description, the dimensions and everything like that. So check out there. And then you can also find information if you want to like contact me or something like that. Let me know. All right. Thank you. Bye.